Hello everyone, glad to have you back. It's been a few months, hasn't it? Well, I'm back for now, but more on that at the end of the video. I really want to focus on today's topic, which is Cheapy Legend. If you didn't know, I don't really talk that much about Cheapy Legend on here, mainly because there isn't that much to talk about in the first place. The game is rather basic and most of the lore is in the anime, so the game doesn't really add that much to it. Except story mode, but you probably know all about that by now. But there's one aspect of the game that I have been ignoring for a very long time. The Zero Test. On every single playthrough I rushed through it to get the machines locked behind it without really caring about the times. It only really matters that you beat the bronze time and everything else is just a bonus. Except if you go for completion, because then a gold time on every single test would be required. I initially thought it would be a simple task, because Cheap Legend is the easiest of all the zero games in my opinion, but as you will see in just a moment, I was very surprised. I'm gonna go through every single test in order and tell you a little something about my experience. You will also see a full clear on it to get an idea of how to get a gold time yourself. Surprisingly, a bit challenging for the very first mission, but still one that isn't too hard for its class. All very easy and quite forgiving to be honest, they are all so boring that there is nothing I could say about them individually. A bit tricky since it uses the crazy bear, which is weird to use in Cheap Legend, but once you understand how to use it, it's fairly easy. Another easy one that doesn't require a lot of skill in my opinion. And here we have one that doesn't seem too complicated, but it is incredibly difficult. Getting a bronze or even a silver is easy, but that time of 5.6 seconds is absolutely ridiculous. It took a while to get consistent 5.7 seconds, and eventually I managed to hit 5.68 seconds. I got better, but that 5.60 still seemed insane, but eventually this happened. After the horror that was C8, this is a nice cooldown challenge. Not too challenging, but still somewhat nice. Seeing the Dragon Bird on this track is already scary enough, but this is just the base game, so we don't need to worry. This challenge is another one that took me a few attempts. I actually had to do it twice because I wasn't recording the first time I did it, but I got a better time on my record attempt, so I'll take it. The main challenge here is to learn where the boost pads are. You really need to hit most of them while using your own booster to beat this in under 27 seconds. And finally, C12 is kinda challenging. A good mission for the end of class C. At first I wasn't too sure if I should hit or avoid the mines, but at the end I managed to beat C12 the same way I managed to beat it boosters, by just hitting the right mines at the right time. Definitely a noticeable increase in difficulty, but nothing too challenging. Pretty sure we all know this little trick to get a free gold in the time of 0 seconds and since getting a gold time without doing this already requires the same route, it really isn't that difficult. A pretty tight time for gold, actually it took me a few attempts, but I wouldn't call it difficult. This may be the freest gold time you could achieve. I'm honestly surprised that gold time doesn't take this skip into consideration. Even without using it, a gold time is pretty easy to achieve. Finish. 
You get loads of extra time to finish this one. Getting a machine like the White Cat here only makes it easier. About time we get another hard one. How fitting it's on the same track as the last really difficult one. The good thing here is I pretty much knew what to do to get a gold time. I just didn't execute it good enough. Until I did. Still pretty difficult in my opinion, but nowhere close to C8's difficulty. I think this one gets easier if you're someone like me who really enjoys machines like the Golden Fox. It slides easily, but not too much. It's pretty fun to use. If I used to that kind of machine, this test seems almost trivial to me, but if you don't like that gameplay, this test is gonna be quite a challenge. Pretty much the same mod for the set for B7, just for machines that don't slide. This test is very similar to B5, same track, similar machine, and quite a bit of extra time. I think you can already tell that this isn't gonna be any harder than B2, just race like usual until here and then repeat the same move from B2 for an easy gold. This one is pretty fun, challenging too. The Bloodhawk really isn't good in cheaper legends, so it takes some time getting used to, but the gold time isn't too tight, so it's just challenging and not difficult. You really gotta take that jump. It saves a lot more time than I thought. The timer seems rather tight. I only managed to tie it. Pretty sure I could go a little bit faster though. Would you believe me when I told you that I actually struggled quite a bit with this one? Well, I did. Part of it is because I absolutely hate getting a boost start with the Astro Robin, so most of them stop there. And in general, the track is just annoying rather than difficult. Very easy, just get enough energy to keep on boosting and it's done. A bit underwhelming for something that's supposed to be hard. A2 is alright, it's a bit harder than I anticipated, but only took a few attempts to get it done. A full lap test this early? Well, it's a good one. A3 is a decent challenge that actually took me a few attempts to beat the gold time. A shame all my practice with the wild goose in F099 doesn't help me here. But one thing I kept from F099 is how to not mess up this turn on silence. That on my first attempt, this one may be the easiest one yet. A5 is one of those tests that gets very easy once you realize that you can pretty much ignore the part that's supposed to be challenging. Just go straight through it and you get an easy gold. And from two easy ones, we go right into A6, which is very challenging. It took me way longer than I'd like to admit to even get times below 10 seconds, and even then it still took quite a few attempts to get a gold time. I really like this one though. The one that was this interesting to use, the track choice really requires you to use it effectively. This is the same exact test as A4. Same track, very similar machine, same time needed for gold. A wasted test to be completely honest. There isn't much you can do wrong on this one. You're given the Blue Falcon, which is an excellent machine for turns like this, but this isn't the last time we are seeing this track, so I'm happy we get an easy test for now. 
the hardest part of A9 is knowing which path is the fastest. Once you got that down, you have loads of time. I'm sure I could have done better, but I still finished with that much time to spare. A10 is pretty basic, no tricks, just a simple track and a machine that can't really do much. Just take every turn as tight as possible and never stop boosting and you will eventually meet the gold time. This test could have been a lot harder if given a different machine, but we can't change that, so here we are. A decent test that may take a handful of attempts, but if you apply what you learned in A5, you are already saving some time here. As the final test of Class A, we have good old SNES Firefield. Always painful to see this trick. Especially in FCO99, but that's a different story. I expected this to be difficult, and don't get me wrong, it may actually be a challenge for some of you, but even with this slight mistake, I managed to beat the goal time by quite a bit, so I'm not too impressed by this. Let's hope Class S has some more challenges. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is a harder version of A5. The Green Panther is absolutely terrible and it took a lot of attempts to get consistent. In the end, I barely managed to beat the gold time. And we are right back to something easier. Managed to get on my first attempt with a bit of time to spare. This isn't really challenging. Maybe with a different machine, but the Mighty Tifoon is pretty good for this. This is one of only three tests I was worried about. S3 doesn't give you anything. A crazy bear with just enough for a single boost on one of the hardest tracks in the game. Great. You really gotta get a feel for the crazy bear to be able to beat this one. What surprised me was that I beat it kinda quickly, only like 20 attempts or so, and I also managed to absolutely smash the gold time, so that's something. And we're gonna continue with the second of the three tests I was worried about. To put it simply, S4 is brutal. Not only is it an already hard portion of a difficult track, but you have to do it with one of the worst machines in the game. And did I mention you started nearly fully depleted energy? Sounds fun, doesn't it? It isn't. I know there are a handful more tests remaining, but I can say with 100% confidence that S4 is by far the absolute hardest one of them all. I was stuck at 10.15 for a few days and saw no way of saving another 0.15 seconds, so I looked at some of the top runs for this test and even then I didn't really understand how to do it. I just kept trying and trying for days weeks even, until I started to slowly improve. Consistent 10.15s, a 10.12, and then a massive jump to 10.05, which gave me enough hope that I may be able to make it. And finally, a day later, I did this. I'm not kidding when I say that this is incredibly difficult. It could be that I'm just bad, but I believe this is the hardest tier test in Cheaper Legend, and this deserves a spot as one of the hardest races in all of f Zero, in my opinion. Well played, Nintendo. Well played. S5 is another difficult challenge, but it is nowhere near as hard as S4. There isn't much you can do to save time, so it's pretty much all skill. And oh my god, do you need a lot of it. I quickly managed to get into the 12.90s and stayed there for most of the runs, but getting the tiny time save proved to be a lot harder than I first thought. I came close a few times. Really, really close. But even after that, it still took me way over 50 attempts to finally get a gold time. And I even managed to save a bit more. I have no idea how though. And now we finally get a break from the hard ones with S6. Another test that seemingly doesn't consider that large parts of the track can be skipped rather easily. Just do a full 180 turn after the first jump and skip this whole section. And if you want to do it a little bit differently, just use the second jump. And if for whatever reason you want to do it without skips, then what's wrong with you? I skipped a tiny part in this run that Barry managed to beat 1960. I did a lot of runs without any skipping and didn't get it, and honestly, at that point I simply couldn't be bored anymore, so just use the skip.
Here we have one that's basically free, not much that can go wrong here, apart from the jump at the end, which can sometimes result in a lap not counting if you jump too far, but other than that, S7 is incredibly easy. I really like this test, it's pretty fun since you go very fast for the entire thing. I'm pretty sure using the mines is gonna result in a better time, but I managed to be more consistent without them. Took me a handful of attempts, but I enjoyed it. I spent more time than I'd like to admit on S9, mainly because I was convinced you have to get through the entire track perfectly. But once I realized that this first hairpin doesn't really matter as long as you don't lose too much speed, I quickly managed to get a decent time below what is needed for gold. From one that gives you quite a bit of time to a test that requires near flawless execution. It's just a short level on easy track with a good machine. All you really gotta watch out for is to refill your boost. You really want to be boosting throughout the entire thing non-stop. I'm gonna be honest here, I had no clue how to tackle this one. The main challenge are these turns, especially the second one. I spent a lot of time on this one to find a somewhat consistent strategy and in the end I came up with this. Slow down just a tiny little bit in the first turn, use side attacks here and slow down more here. I first tried side attacks but hitting the wall seemed to work better for me so I went with that at the end and I ended up with a time that barely managed to beat the goal time. And as the last test we also have the last of the three I was worried about. It really does seem intimidating at first. If you just try to do it normally, you are simply not gonna succeed. The Black Bull just can't take these turns, so your only options are breaking and spamming side attacks, which is exactly what I did. It still took me a lot of attempts, because I am really not the biggest fan of the Black Bull and Sheep Legend. But at the end, this test is not really that difficult, fitting for class S, but even after what I'd consider an okay run, I had a lot of spare time, so it's alright in my book. And that's all 48 tests on gold. I'd say that this was the hardest content Sheep Legend has to offer, with the exception of this one evil challenge which I already talked about in this video a while ago. Most of the tests can be beaten somewhat easily, but the ones that are harder really turn it up a notch or two. It was a fun challenge, one I'd highly recommend you try as well. And because it was so enjoyable, I'm considering doing the same for F-Zero Climax. I have some unfinished business with Climax's serial test anyway, so let me know if you want to see that in the future. But I think that's all for this topic. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks a lot for sticking around. Tell me about your experience with the serial test. Have you done all goals before? Which challenge was the hardest for you? I'd love to know. Coming up is a little personal update if you care about that sort of thing. But as always, I hope to see you next time. Have a good one. Bye. So, personal update, huh? Well, if you have been following my community posts, you know that I've been doing better recently. It's all going up one step at a time. I'm still struggling quite a bit, but I see a way forward and I have had some positive things happen recently, so that's all a big plus. I really enjoy making these videos and I have been playing a lot of F-Zero during my break, mainly focusing on F-Zero 99 and another project that may be a video sometime soon, but don't expect it in the near future. I have one still unfinished video and more ideas that will be made at some point, but for now I really don't want to overdo it. Like I mentioned in my post, I have some excess energy and motivation which I use for this channel, but it's limited. And there are also other things I do with my free time. But all you really need to know is that I'm doing alright. It's all going better than before. Thank you again for sticking around, it really means more than you may think. I'll see you again soon enough.